Hi Jake Recaps here. Today I am going to explain a movie called Less Miserables, 1815. After 26 years of the French Revolution, the king is back on the throne. Jean is a slave who with thousands of convicts like him drags a dilapidated ship into the bay. Being in submission and being under the supervision of Inspector Javert, the man is still as strong in spirit as before. After doing the hard work, the law enforcement officer goes downstairs to entrust Jean with the next task. He orders him to pick up a flag attached to a broken log and bring it back. Showing superhuman strength, the slave performs the task, causing not only surprise, but also fear. After that, Inspector Javert informs him that his term of hard labor has come to an end. He finally gets freedom, but the concept of freedom turned out to be very relative. A man must report to a lawyer every month, and he is given a paper that he must provide to people when trying to get a job. This angers Jean because he did nothing wrong and did not deserve such an attitude. He received a whole five years of hard labor just because he stole a piece of bread for his sister's sick son. Jean was sentenced to another 14 years for numerous attempts to escape from slavery. Having regained his freedom, the man went on a wandering in the hope that he could find a job. The reality turned out to be harsh because no one wanted to take him to them. Someone simply ignores the man after reading the accompanying paper. Others despise and beat him, mocking the slave, who is not able to acquire the same rights as other people. One night, freezing from the cold, he met the Bishop of Dean. The man of the church treated him like a brother and sheltered the unfortunate Jean. He offered him shelter, wine and food, so that he could warm himself, drink and eat, rested after a hard journey through royal France. Before going to bed, Jean saw how the bishop's assistants were hiding silver in the closet, and, knowing this, he could not sleep. At night, a man who did not believe in the love and sincerity of a church minister stole all the silver and ran away. On the morning of the next day, the guards caught him and brought him back to the house of the bishop. Jean told the gendarmes that the bishop had given him the silver, and they needed him to confirm the thief's words. Bishop not only confirmed Jean's words, but also said that he forgot two silver candlesticks, which he also gave to the man. This act impressed Jean so much that he kept candlesticks all his life, and wherever he traveled, took them with him as a symbol of faith in God and good people. Moreover, the actions of the bishop had a strong influence on the freed convict. Once in the church, he repented and realized that he had acted horribly. Now Jean is ready to understand and admit all his mistakes, start the path of redemption and forget old sins. Realizing that the name will keep him, the man tears up his documents and scatters them in the wind to start a new life. Eight years later, Montreuil, having sold all the silver donated by the bishop, except for the candlesticks, Jean began a new life and became the mayor of a small town. At the same time, one of the workers in the garment factory, owned by Jean, is bullied by her colleagues. Fantine also endures the harassment of the guildmaster, who shows increased attention to the charming girl. At some point, unfriendly comrades notice Fantine's letter and take it away to learn her secrets. As it turned out, the girl fell in love a few years ago and spent the whole summer with a man. He deceived and used her and after a couple months he left her forever. Fantine became pregnant and soon had a daughter. Hiding this fact, Girl gave Cosette to the family of an innkeeper who has a daughter named Eponina. The girl is constantly sick, so Monsieur and Madame Thenardier constantly demand money from her. All this does not bother the guild foreman, and he, considering the girl not worthy of his attention, threw her out into the street without giving a penny. Jean, who arrived at the factory, heard screams and requests for help but did not help the unfortunate girl as Inspector Javert came to visit him. The face of the mayor of the city seems familiar to him, but the law enforcement officer cannot remember if they have seen each other before and swears allegiance to Jean, promising to protect his city from enemies and other criminals. 
Their conversation is interrupted by another cries for help coming from the street. The mayor hurries to the people calling him and notices that a wagon has fallen on one of the locals. Having shown inhuman strength, Jean lifted the wagon and allowed the poor fellow stuck under it to be pulled out. Seeing all this, Javert realized that in front of him was the same person who once tore up his documents and hid from the law. Fantine realizes that she needs to send money to the innkeeper, as her daughter is sick and needs treatment. She sends all her money to the man, thinking that this will save Cosette, and does not realize that the Thenardier family is blatantly deceiving her. After being fired from her job, Fantine feels desperate and goes to the pier, which is full of corrupt girls. She is not ready to provide services, but sells her hair and teeth to send money to her sick daughter. Fantine soon loses the last drops of dignity and honor, realizing that for the sake of Cosette, she is ready for anything. Time passes and she becomes the same easily accessible girl as the rest, giving herself to men for pennies. On one of these nights, another client comes to her, but Fantine refuses to serve him. The man shows perseverance and rudeness, so girl hits him to the face. At the same time, law enforcement officers appear here, subordinate to Javert. The client lies and says that the girl attacked him to rob him. The inspector decides to send Fantine to prison, but Jean intervenes in the dialogue, watching what is happening from the side. In the unfortunate and exhausted girl, he recognizes a former factory worker and decides to help her. Instead of prison, Jean takes her to the hospital, but she does not feel better. Inspector Javert wrote a report on Jean, suspecting that he was the same slave who had been under his command for 19 years. Soon the guardian of law and order received a response, which reported that the gendarmes managed to catch the real convict and he would soon appear in the court. After learning all this, Inspector forgives Jean the and thinks about what he should do. On the one hand, he is free, and no one else will suspect that the mayor of the city and the convict are one and the same person. At the same time, pangs of conscience do not allow Jean to sit quietly when an innocent man is in the dock. Realizing that he cannot let the god down, Jean goes to court and declares that he is the same convict under the number 24,601. After that, the mayor of the city visits Fantine, and the girl asks him to look after her daughter Cosette before she dies. The inspector finds Jean and tries to arrest him, but he manages to escape. At this time, little Cosette is cleaning up the innkeeper's house. Foster parents are very harsh with her, so Madame Thenardier sends the baby to the winter forest for water. The girl is afraid to go alone, but she is unable to refuse and obediently obeys the order of her stepmother. Meanwhile, the innkeeper opens a drinking establishment and, joyfully receiving guests, robs each of them. He takes literally everything, a suitcase, glasses, and a hat, trying to earn money on everything. Customers are deceived, but they do not see and do not understand this, believing that they have ended up in a tavern with an honest and decent owner. Jean meets a little frightened and chilled girl in the forest. Upon learning that she is Cosette, he goes to the innkeepers and offers them 1,500 francs in exchange for a girl. The dishonest madame and monsieur tried in every possible way to rob him, but Jean did not succumb to their tricks and took the girl. A few minutes later, Inspector Jevert arrived in pursuit of the fugitive. A few hours later, the convoy stops the wagons for inspection at the north gate of Paris. Noticing Javert among the gendarmes, Jean escapes with little girl, using his dexterity and the cable which he stole in an attempt to escape from the inspector. Once in the church, Jean asks for shelter from the gardener. It was this man that the mayor of the city pulled out from under the wagon, so Jean and Cosette remain in the monastery where the girl spends her entire childhood. 1832, Paris. The times of the June uprising come and the alphabet friends appear in the center of the plot. Students who started a revolution to overthrow the king. They dream of France becoming free and democratic, but now is far from that. 
Little Givroshi is the son of poor innkeepers who is not afraid to express the opinion of the poor people and spit in the face of the rich. He helps the students and is the youngest member of their insurgency. Marius, Anjaurus, and Eponina are the leaders of the Friends of the Alphabet group, who use slogans to call people to action and not to continue a weak-willed existence. At some point, Marius notices Cosette and falls in love with the girl at first sight. She also notices the guy and their feelings are mutual. Eponina is in love with Marius and hints at it in every possible way, but he does not pay any attention to her and treats her like a friend. Here, innkeepers lure Jean into a trap in order to rob. Recognizing in him the man who bought the adopted daughter, Thenardier dream of reprisals, but Javert appears, who decides to arrest the swindlers. Jean and their daughter are forced to flee, realizing that the inspector may again attack their trail. In the evening, students gather to discuss plans for the near future. Meanwhile, Marius' thoughts are entirely devoted to the girl he fell in love with at first sight. Cosette also cannot sleep and dreams of meeting a guy. Eponina admitted that she knew the girl and called her sister as a child. She knows where Jean and Cosette live, so she brings Marius to the girl's house. Having got to know each other better, lovers promise each other to be faithful and dream of the next meeting. Jean is jealous of this because he does not want to lose his daughter, the only person close to him. As soon as Marius leaves, an innkeeper and several law enforcement officers approach Jean's house. Eponina decides to save the good people and starts screaming to get their attention. Jean feels threatened and forces his daughter to run away so as not to fall into the hands of Inspector Javert. Before leaving, Cosette leaves a letter which Eponine finds and reads. She is in love with Marius, so she does not give him the envelope and informs him that the girl has left forever. Having taken this hard, the guy suffers and returns to the students, continuing to plan the revolution. A couple of hours later, the students learn that General Lamarck has died. They consider this a good symbol and decide that the blow should be struck right now. In the morning, during a solemn ceremony, Injaurus and Marius start a riot to rouse the people and push them to start a new revolution. At some point, one of the frightened gendarmes shoots and kills a peaceful woman. This causes a wave of discontent, resulting in an armed conflict between law enforcement officers and students. People support Marius and his team, throwing old furniture out of the windows so that the guys build barricades and hold lines. Inspector Javert pretends to be an ordinary person and helps students. The man promises to find out the plans of the enemy and leaves. At night, he returns and reports that the army is not ready to attack and will wait for dinner to starve out the students. Attentive Givrochi exposes the inspector and the students capture the traitor. A few minutes later, the gendarmes surround the people at the barricades and force them to surrender, since the others have already submitted to them and laid down their arms. These barricades are the only point of resistance and the gendarmes are ready for both peaceful and armed conflict resolution. A shootout begins and Marius, realizing that they are losing, threatens the gendarmes with an explosion. Nobody wants to die, so the police retreat. Eponina was wounded and, before her death, confesses to Marius that she hid Cosette's farewell letter. She loves the guy and wanted to be close to him, but now she understands that this is impossible. Having received the letter and having learned where to look for his beloved, Marius sends Givrogshe with a note. The boy gives the letter to Jean, and he, after reading it, goes to the barricades. He sneaks up on the students in a gendarme uniform and nearly becomes their prisoner, but Gavrogshe protects Jean. At the same moment, the man notices the gendarmes who have taken places on neighboring roofs and helps to destroy the ambush. Students allow the former convict to take revenge on the offender and kill Javert. He takes him aside, but does not kill the inspector, but releases him, giving him freedom. A little later, Jean hears how much Marius loves his daughter. 
He understands that the guy is still young and asks God to save his life. Jean is ready to die if only his daughter is happy because he has lived enough. In the morning, students see the gendarmes approaching and prepare for battle. The night rain has wetted the gunpowder, and they do not have enough cartridges. So little Givroshi climbs into the line of fire and tries to pick up the muskets of the killed gendarmes. Law enforcement officers kill the boy, and this ignites the conflict with even more force. Officers fire from all guns and destroy the barricades, after which they begin the assault. As a result of the clashes, they injure Marius and kill everyone else. Javert is amazed at the courage of little Givroshi and leaves him his medal. Jean manages to save the young man and drag him into the sewers. Here he meets the innkeeper who stole the boy's family ring. Jean is looking for a way out, but meets the inspector. The former convict asks for an hour's head start and leaves with a half-dead guy on his shoulders. Javert is unable to shoot the man who saved him. Pangs of conscience drive a man crazy and soon he takes his own life. Sometime later, Marius recovers and comes to the same bar where they used to meet with the students. He is the only one who survived and the guy's father is very happy about this. He allows his son to marry Cosette. Jean also approves of their marriage. On the eve of the wedding, the former convict tells Marius his story and leaves his home to go on a journey. The Thenardiers come to the wedding and tell Marius nasty things about Cosette's father. The guy knows the real story and sees his ring on the innkeeper's finger, so he demands to tell the whole truth. It turned out that Jean was in a monastery nearby and the couple went there to see him. Cosette finds her father and spends the last minutes of his life next to him. After dying, Jean meets Fantine, the bishop and the students who died at the barricades. They welcome him to paradise, a free and democratic France. And here movie ends. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow at the same time.